In this video, I just want to talk very briefly about a very specialist population of cells which are extremely prominent during the development of the nervous system. These cells are known as the neural crest and are derived from the ectoderm which invaginates to form the neural tube. Specifically, what happens essentially is that the population of cells present um, at the point where the ectoderm heals back over after the um, neural tube has formed, separate themselves and then migrate to a whole load of different regions of the body. For example, these, these cells um, form all of the sensory neurons in the peripheral nervous system, they form the postsynaptic autonomic neurons, they form the enteric nervous system, as well as forming cells involved in myelination um, and also the endocrine system. These cells are also crucial for the development of the head and quite commonly in neural crest cell defects there are deformities of the head and facial anatomy. Interestingly, the neural crest cells also become melanocytes within the skin so um, albinism uh, does involve um, neural crest cells as well as, as, of course, the metabolic pathways resulting in the synthesis of melanin. Furthermore, the neural crest forms um, the arachnoid and the pia mater of the meninges. These are the so-called leptomeninges. In addition to this, neural crest contributes to the thymus and thyroid glands, parts of the heart, and that's interesting because the spiral septum which separates the truncus arteriosus into the aorta, the aorta and the pulmonary trunk, um, has a large contribution from neural crest. So once again, neural crest disorders can lead to um, problems with the heart. And furthermore, the teeth also do receive a contribution. So let's just have a look at these images and just um, reiterate some of those important points concerning neural crest cell development. As we said, um, we've got the neural folds just here visible in a transverse section and the neural groove, which is the invaginating region of tissue that's going to form the neural tube. And as I said right at the beginning, these neural folds will eventually fuse together to heal over the surface ectoderm. And it is from these regions that the neural crest cells themselves originate. On this three-dimensional representation here, you can see the neural crest cells as a block and you can see that they are migrating sort of in the anterolateral direction. So they're going to be migrating laterally and then giving rise to the melanocytes within the skin and they're going to be migrating anteriorly towards the uh, gut and also towards the ultimate site of um, sensory and autonomic neurons. In the image at the bottom here, um, we can see um, the development of the neural crest specifically with relation to their neural derivatives. So we can see that we said that the neural crest originates up here and migrates in this kind of direction where I'm pointing. And as the neural crest migrates, certain populations of cells stop off. So some of them stop at this point to form the dorsal root ganglia. Some of them stop at this point to form the sympathetic ganglia within the sympathetic chain. Some of them stop at this point to form the sympathetic ganglia supplying the gut. And some of them continue anteriorly into the wall of the gut itself to contribute to the enteric nervous system. Furthermore, we can also see that they do make a contribution to the um, adrenal gland as well. So remember that those um, chromaffin cells within the adrenal medulla are themselves derived from neural crest. So with such a complex pattern of migration, it is no surprise that there are de described disorders of neural crest cell development. And these are very many in number and very complex in their clinical features. However, two important disorders that I think that you should be aware of are de George syndrome and Hirschsprung's disease. In de George syndrome, we have um, a number of problems, um, including those affecting the face, um, as well as the thymus. And 
people with de George syndrome do have immunodeficiency. Whereas in Hirschsprung's disease, this involves a problem with the neural crest cell migration to the gut wall. And certain segments of particularly the large intestine can have no um, enteric nervous system leading to problems with constipation, for example. So that's all I wanted to talk about with regard to the neural crest cells. These are extremely important cells and it's important that you go away and do some more reading on DeGeorge syndrome and Hirschsprung's disease. Thank you for listening.